George Aiko and welcome back to the Govern HR YouTube channel. In our ongoing series here with Risk Taxonomy focusing on hiring risks, today we're going to look at the next three risks in our list. We're going to look at hiring staff with the wrong skills for the role, we're going to look at utilising unapproved recruitment vendors, and we're going to look at hiring unqualified or underqualified staff for the role. So without any further ado, let's look at the first slide. The first slide looks at hiring staff with the wrong skills for the role and what are the controls that we can have in place. The first rule I'd like to say is don't cut and paste. Don't just replace a role with a role. Look at expanding on the role. Look at building on the role. Look at hiring someone in with more skills, better skills, uh, a broader scope, more experience that can add value to the role. So don't just be lazy and cut and paste. Agree on a clear job description and the expectations of the role. Make sure you agree that with the line manager. Clearly communicate this to the recruiter. It's very important for the recruiter to understand what you're looking for. Re-emphasize this at the interview. So when you're speaking to the candidate, ensure they are aware of what your expectations are. So there are no surprises. Conduct a structured and approved appropriate interview and assessment process that you've got within your organization, ensuring that all outcomes are documented and you have file notes for future reference, ensuring that you've covered all the bases with the recruiter and you've covered all the bases with the candidate. Our next area we're looking at is utilizing unapproved recruitment vendors. Now, this can cause all sorts of problems. Most organizations have approved recruitment vendors that they use, one or maybe more. And they've agreed on pricing with them, discounts, they've uh, agreed on, on various uh, value added uh, extras that they get with that relationship. Now, utilizing an unapproved vendor may cost more because the pricing is outside the scope that you've already agreed upon with the existing vendors. And it can also create disharmony with the relationship that you have with the approved vendors. So, Make sure that it's all covered. Ensure the engagement of recruitment vendors is included in your employment lifecycle process. Document and communicate your employment lifecycle to all stakeholders. We've said this before, but it's important to re-emphasize. It's absolutely important to do so. List approved vendors and communicate to all stakeholders. So make sure all line managers, all recruiting managers, understand who we're using and why. Embed HR in the engagement of approval process. So, so when a line manager is looking to hire, they need to check in with HR before they start approaching recruitment vendors. So we keep them on track and we make sure they're utilizing the ones that we've agreed and we've approved. And if the line managers are not happy or if you're feeling uncomfortable or there's a, a new vendor that, that's out there and, and is doing a, a much better job or has got a, a wider reach, maybe it's time to review your vendors and review them on a regular basis anyway. Our next one is hiring underqualified or unqualified staff. Now, we need to determine the minimum qualification required for each role that we're hiring, whether it's an accounting qualification, a law qualification, a training, trading, whatever qualification, be sure you understand what's the minimum. Communicate that clearly to the recruiter so they understand what they're looking for. Ensure the screening vendor includes comprehensive qualification checks in their screening process. This is absolutely critical to the whole process being successful. And ensure, as we've said before, time and time again, ensure you have internal checks on screening outcomes. So you internally can determine whether or not the qualifications as checked by the screening vendor meet our requirements. And finally, as we've said again many times, document the outcomes. Include file notes. File notes are always critical throughout any process within HR when making a decision. It's important to be able to go back and look at the documentation. Now these are just three in the long list that we've got. We've got two more coming up and then we'll move on to the next process of the employment life cycle for your review. So please click like below if you like this video. 
Um, also subscribe to this channel so you get the videos when they come out. Leave us a comment. It's very important to leave us a comment, a question, a request, some of your thoughts because it's valuable to have that interaction. And also check out our website. At GovernHR, we can help your organization by reviewing the existing uh, hiring process that you've got or by facilitating training for your team to ensure that they know what their roles and responsibilities are and what best practice is. Thank you for watching. All the best and goodbye.